Hi all, my name is Vishnu Dutt and in this video we are going to discuss about underlay and overlay terms with respect to SDXs. The plan is to build a strong base on various SDXs components like underlay and overlay, VXLAN, Lisp, etc. Eventually, we will combine all these concepts to get an overall understanding of SDXs network fabric. The concept of underlay and overlay is not new. Different technologies have been using these concepts from many years. Underlay network is a physical infrastructure above which overlay network is built. We can understand this with the help of GRE or generic routing encapsulation. In networking world, everyone knows about GRE, right? It is pretty old encapsulation method. So consider this diagram. Here we have three routers, R1, R2, and R3. R1 and R3 are managed by me, but I do not have control over R2. You may say that R2 is part of internet. The requirement is that I need to run a routing protocol between R1 and R3. This may be OSPF or EIGRP. But the issue is that I do not have a direct link between R1 and R3. But R1 and R3 have a connectivity over IP network or internet. Do not worry about this structure for now. We will be filling its content later. To resolve this situation, predominantly GRE is used. What GRE does here is that it creates a logical point-to-point -point link between R1 and R3. Physically, this link does not exist as it is a virtual link. So GRE technology says if you can provide IP connectivity between R1 and R3, I can provide you a virtual or logical link that directly connects R1 and R3. Now, over this logical point-to-point -point link, you can run your routing protocol. The most important part is that R1 and R3 should be reachable. Here, this reachability is provided by underlying IPv4 network between R1 and R3 via R2. It doesn't matter what routing protocol is running between R1, R2, and R3. This network or the physical network between these three routers is called underlay network. The logical link between or we can say that the logical link which eventually built over this network is overlay, right? So if underlay network has some reachability issues, overlay network will also show reachability issues. Finally, let's understand how things actually works. Suppose for now, let's assume our GRE tunnel is working between R1 and R3. This is shown in red color. Here, you can see that. On this tunnel, I am running OSPF protocol so that R1 knows about this network, which is 2.2.2.0/24, and R3 knows about this network, which is 1.1.1.0/24. So let's assume name of this tunnel is tunnel 0. So if we go to the routing table of R1, we can see a OSPF route to reach 2.2.2.0/24. So the entry should look like this in R1 that if you want to reach 2.2.2.0/24, then you have to go via tunnel 0. If you are having some issues understanding this, I would say take a pause and go through the video once again. Okay, so far, so good. Let's do a packet walk now. Let's try to understand who will encapsulate and decapsulate the packets and why. Suppose host H1, uh, this one or this host, initiate ICMP ping towards host H2. Here, this host. As H2 is in different network, host H1 will send this ping packet to its default gateway, which is R1. So, this packet will have source IP of 1.1.1.1 and destination IP of 2.2.2.2. This packet will reach to R1. Now, in R1 routing table, we have a route towards 2.2.2.2, right? The outgoing interface for this route is the tunnel interface or tunnel 0, right? So, here is all magic happens. R1 will encapsulate this packet into another IP packet, now the time to understand this with the GRE packet. This initial IP ICMP packet will get an GRE header. Okay, here you can see the GRE header. 
initial IP packet and GRE header will be encapsulated into another IP packet. As you can see, this is shown with the bigger, uh, bigger box or bigger IP packet here. So let's fill the GRE packet contents. This was the original IP packet. R1 will slap a GRE header and encapsulate this into a new IP packet. New IP packet source and destination address will be 10.10.10.1 and 10.10.20.2 respectively. R2 will see only encapsulated packet. It will forward this packet towards R3. Once R3 received this packet, which has its IP address as a destination address, it comes to know about GRE packet inside it, right? R3 will decapsulate this packet, remove this GRE header, and forward the original IP packet towards H2. In Wireshark, the GRE packet look like this, okay? So as you can see, this one is, is, is the outer, outer packet. Here is GRE header. You can see here, this one is the inner packet. And finally, the ICMP packet. Okay, so if you want to go really deep into this, you can you can you can always download a Wireshark packet for uh, for for GRE. Guys, believe me that here the intent is not to explain you the GRE, but to make you learn the concept of underlay and overlay, which is a very old concept. Here, IP network between R1, R2, and R3 is the underlay network. It can have other redundant path also to make uh, underlay more robust. For example, a router R4 can be inserted here for multiple paths between R1 and R3, right? We can insert it here. The point-to-point -point GRE tunnel between R1 and R3 is the overlay network. So overlay is the virtual network running over physical network or underlay. SDX solution uses similar concepts and build its underlay and overlay network. SDXs uses simple layer three or IP network as its underlay and VXLAN encapsulation method it's as its overlay. In SDXs solution we called overlay as network fabric. Let's try to understand why we are doing this. Hope you remember in first video of this series, we discuss about VLAN stretching issue. Now let's compare how we can stretch a VLAN in traditional layer two network uh, by using an v, uh, encapsulation method called VXLAN. So left hand side diagram represent a traditional network in which these links are trunk links. So all of these links are trunk. If we are not running VPC, spanning tree will block some of these links to avoid loop. If a host in VLAN 10 at switch one, sends a packet to host in VLAN 10 on switch 3. Before placing this packet on trunk, switch 1 will insert a dot one q header on the packet, which says that this packet belongs to VLAN 10. So this packet of VLAN 10 will have dot one q header. When this frame reaches at switch 3, switch 3 knows where to forward it, right? It just need to check the value in its dot one q header. The value is 10, which represents the packet belongs to VLAN 10. Now consider right hand side diagram. Here I have converted all these layer two trunk links to layer three. Every link now has IP address configured on it. I have also configured a routing protocol on all layer three links. As a result, we have a full layer three connectivity between switches, access switches and core switches, right? But now there is a very basic problem exist in this network. Now devices in the same VLAN on different switches will not be able to talk as layer two frames are not forwarded on layer three links. Hence, we cannot stretch the VLAN. To resolve this problem, we need an encapsulation mechanism which encapsulate the layer two frame into layer three packets, right? Moreover, we need to insert a VLAN information also in this encapsulating packet so that destination switch can understand when to or where to forward this frames. Let's see how it happens. Suppose host A is connected here 
host B is connected here, both are part of the same VLAN. Okay. Host A initiates a ping towards host B. Let's draw the packet. We have ICMP packet here, and host A also creates a layer to part for it. Do not worry, we will be discussing in later videos how host A creates a L2 header. This frame reaches to switch 1. Now, let's assume switch 1 knows that host B sits behind switch 3. Again, we will discuss how switch 1 learns this information. But for now, let's assume that switch 1 knows where exactly host B is. Now, the task is very easy for switch 1. It just needs to encapsulate this L2 frame into IP packet and then forward it to corresponding L3 link. Now, switch 1 needs to route the packet towards switch 3. Once switch 3 receives this encapsulated packet, it gets rid of with outer IP packet and forwards the inner layer to packet to host B. Simple, right? In SDXS architecture, underlay consists of layer 3 links between these devices or you can say between these edge nodes, control plane nodes, and border nodes. The routing protocol which runs on these L3 link is ISIS. It is not necessary that you need to run ISIS as a routing protocol in underlay, but the solution recommends this, pro this protocol. As we just discussed, we can use VXLAN to stretch VLANs over this underlay network, right? As a result, a virtual network is formed over the underlay network. We call this virtual network as fabric or campus fabric in SDXS terminology. You can see this here, right? So this is kind of uh, an overlay for SDXS technology. So now I believe we have a good understanding of SDXS underlay and overlay. But with this, we have another set of questions. For example, these questions are, how address resolution protocol works in VXLAN environment? What is the control plane we used we use in SDXS? So guys, let's discuss all these in, in coming videos. In next video, I will be discussing SDXS data plane in detail. Hope you have enjoyed this video. Uh, bye for now, guys.